There we go. Okay. Um, I thought I'd start with uh, this one. It may be the only one because we'll probably only run for 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, but it was a shot we took very early in the morning um, uh, at Whitby, Whitby Abbey. And uh, what I've got, I've got two, two versions here. This is the HDR merge, uh, which is this one. And this is just like the middle picture, shall we say. So if I click that, can you see my Explorer? Yeah. Okay, so I took five shots. Um, but to be frank, I probably didn't set the bracketing far enough apart. So, I, you know, even the dark one is still quite light in places. And my very light one is extremely light. <laughs> so um, I probably didn't do the best bracketing job on the, on the morning. So as it happens, um, there isn't an awful lot of difference between the middle picture and the merged bracketed shots. And, uh, but if you wanted to do that, if you'd have done it right, like I didn't, you would have uh, gone into file and gone new HDR merge, add, and picked the three, five or seven photos you'd have taken. I won't, I won't, the reason I preloaded it was it does take a couple of minutes to process and uh, I don't have a good song and dance routine. <laughs> uh, so when you do that, um, it'll align the photos for you. If you're on a tripod, you don't have to turn it on. Um, it does a bit of noise reduction. You can remove ghosts. That's only useful if you've got something moving in front of the frame, which I didn't. And you can go into tone mapping automatically. That's the bottom one here. Uh, which I did. So if I cancel that and basically, as I say, get one out of the oven. Um, this is basically the photo with no tone mapping. So what it's done is it's it's tried to shift the um, uh, merge merge it so that anything that's completely white or completely blank is replaced with the images from the other photos and basically bring it in. Uh, effectively but usually what the first thing you see is that one which is natural um, to me that's a little bit bright and down the side here you've got a bunch of presets and what I generally do is I just have a quick look at the presets and use that as a starting point so the next one's detailed and I, I quite like that one it does does make the detail if I flip between them you can see it does bring out the brickwork which is quite nice and you've got contrast and you've got horrible what's that called dramatic or overly colorful <laughs> i think so I'll, I'll stay with that one and basically when i'm flipping between these it's changing all of the controls here uh, i'll just move that down a little bit which is exactly the same as if you'd gone into the uh, develop persona with the exception of these two at the top and you've got tone compression if i move that all the way down and move contrast that's your bog basic shot uh, tone compression to bring all the all the colors more you bring it in the more it compresses the colors to to get them into range and then the local contrast is just uh, as it says it's applying contrast to the picture and you can take that all the way up to the point that it looks quite probably be good for an urban urban uh, grunge scene but that's probably a little bit over the top so if i click on detail again you can see that hang on, do that do that it's brought the local contra it's doing full tone compression uh and adding some local contrast and i playing with it earlier I, it was actually about right because I think if I go up I think it's a little bit too much and if I go down um, I was actually quite happy with what it picked you can then continue um, I'm I was worried about this area because it's quite 
I was wondering if if um, I'd run uh, had some white there, and the quick way is just turn the exposure down, and we can see that there is actually blue in there. I won't I won't use that because I don't want the rest of the image. But what you can do is go into shadows and highlights, and the highlights I can just try dropping those. And the nice thing about the highlights, it's not really affecting the main building, but it is affecting those sky elements, which were too, too bright. Now the handy thing up the top right here, uh, if I go to split view, we can see a, a before and after. So it, it's it's quite quite dramatic. Um, but funnily enough, before is, is a bit brighter over here. It's a bit better. So uh, let's just have another Let's just go back to full. Uh, I could increase the saturation a tad. Probably not too much. Cause, uh, I think grass probably looks about right about there. Not much. Um, and yeah, I could look at... So the, the, the high, uh, highlights and shadows are affecting the extreme ends. So the, it only affects the, the light things or the dark things. Um, so if I move that one, it's affecting the build. You can see it affecting it in this area here. So I can make that darker or lighter, but it's not really affecting the rest of the rest of the Im image. So maybe what I need to look at is um, brightness, which is more the, the mid tones. So if I drop that not making an awful lot of difference. So we're going to deal with that. Um, outside of this main purpose of this is get a picture that there's no white there's no no complete white no complete black the rest of it you can do do later um, but if i look here you can tell i've looked at this picture before i've got some chromatic aberration going on and you can see some blue and red and you'll get them uh when there's a, a big change in Color, yeah, you know, light against dark, basically. So you tend to get it on the edge of buildings on in bright sunlight. So um, uh, we don't have that uh, option in this this side, but I'll I'll show you on a uh, on the the straight image here. So if we come in here, we can still see it here, and where was it here? So this is the develop, this is a single photo in the develop persona. So under uh, lens correction, I can turn on chromatic aberration reduction. It sometimes works, <laughs> or it sometimes reduces it. Uh, it's, it'll take a moment. Yeah, it's, Yeah, I could have probably. The other thing, the way I could have done it with the. Uh, here we go, that's done. Let's have a quick look. Um, see, it's reduced it. Not as, not as um, marked as it was. Uh, the, if you're seeing little yellow dots, that's the. Um, this is showing uh, uh, clipped, uh, clipped mid tones. I don't use it very option, often. I generally have these two on, which is show show me if things are too too bright. So, if, uh, but let's go let's go in here and see if we can do some more work on here. So I've just hit defringe. So what we're doing is we're looking for a red. So I've got feedback on the, uh, can people turn their microphones off? Oh, I, I can do it. No, it'd be better if you did actually, then you can turn it on when, uh, whenever you need to talk to me. All right. So, okay. So what we're looking for a red, so we're trying to match this color here. I find the threshold hope moving down. You can see that disappearing now. 
it's red and I just bring it down until it disappears and that's it now you can also get rid of the complementary hue which is the opposite one which it should be the the um, uh, cyan and you can see it's reduced the cyan by quite a lot so I'll take that as being good enough and I'll hit develop now alternatively if if, if um if you're going through the, the bracketed stuff doing the HDR through there there's no reason you can't finish the HDR tone compression and then go into the develop and then do exactly the same thing it's just a, an order of things I tend to do the chromatic aberration in the develop studio because I, I, I want to get rid of that stuff before I do any other editing um, so if I go back to this one okay so we're gonna apply that so that's now applying the tone mapping and I think I'll probably carry on with this one to be honest um, but it's got the chromatic aberration in there so perhaps I should have um, uh, it's um, sidestep into develop move up here uh, chromatic let's get rid of some of it so some people I think you I think it remembers it now so if you turn it on next time you do it I think it remembers it's turned on because you see an awful lot of people with um, uh, Photoshop you know first thing they do in is go lens correction chromatic aberration defringe blah 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 and then they move on so you I think it does remember it but uh, you didn't do such a good job there all right let's um let's bring that down to the reds and move my threshold down and you can see it disappearing perhaps I haven't got quite the right color red Uh, maybe change the tolerance. No, turn the tolerance up and turn the radius up. Not, not as good as it was. I'm not going to spend any more time on it, but um, that, that's that's not too bad. Develop that. Okay, so we got basically the photo in in the sort of tonal ranges and uh, we want now it's an interesting shot in that you, on the left here particularly you can see that the sun was coming in from the left and just hitting this brickwork this was in shadow and you can see it hitting the the, the top of the uh, top of the abbey there because the sun's literally just just coming up um, now basically I still want some more detail in that so the first thing I'll do is my usual trick which is a high pass sharpen um, if I just increase it for a moment and zoom in and I want to basically reduce it until it just faint lines and it will add um, contrast to those areas normally I use uh, um, linear light as my as my uh, blend mode okay so if I do that and come here open up if I turn that off and turn it on you can should be able to see another bit of sharpening going on so that's that's pretty sharp for a picture this big uh, what it's always good to do is just do zoom 100% so that's if you printed it out yeah it, it would still be good quality there so uh, let's uh, let's just move on um, if you've upgraded to 1.7 um, there's a nice feature here if you right click on here um, one of the options uh, 
I can't find it now. You can you can make these tiles bigger and smaller. Um, where it was here, you can color them as well. So if if you if you you can use color code to tell you what you're doing. Um, where it was on here. Yeah, don't know. I'll have to watch the video again. But yeah, you can make make these bigger or smaller depending on your your want. Anyway, so my knee. I, I still want some more detail in the in the sky. And my normal first port of call is have a look at the levels. I may or may not need to do anything. If you look at the histogram, um, I can look at the blacks. I could bring that in. If I hold the uh, alt key down, I think, yes. You've probably seen this in uh, paint shop, uh, uh, Photoshop uh, tutorials. And if I hold the alt key down and move the white point, I can move it in. Up. Oh, it should be showing. There we go. So it shows you when you've overdone it. So I could I could bring it into there, say, because you you look at the range. There's nothing there's nothing up here. Um, so I can bring that down a fair ways. So it's not really having much effect. So I'll, I'll just leave it there and. Leave that as is, and then I shall do a um, curves. And I find this the best way of, of getting contrast into the photo. So down the bottom is your blacks. So if I move that point, you can see it darkening the sky, but it's also darkening the building. So I don't mind the building being a little bit more detailed, and I can move the highlights up and down as well and you can see that's affecting the sky quite nicely to the left and also the front of the building so i'm gonna gonna leave it about there i think that's a little bit more dramatic um i'll put that above levels now what i could do is i could uh, duplicate that layer um, and see what effect that has it gives it a much more dramatic effect in the sky, but it's much too dark there. So I'm going to delete that. Uh, sometimes that works quite nicely. Uh, but what I'll do is I do still want the sky a little bit darker. So I'll pick my, make sure I'm on the right layer and give myself a decent sized brush and just uh, do a selection. Um, that looks like it's done quite a good job uh, but of course what we want to do also is select the windows now we're in add mode so i don't i can just click in into each area um that's gone over hold the alt key down and bring that back uh, make my cursor a little bit smaller right bring that in grab that and I should be able to do this fairly quickly. So just grab that, grab that, grab that, grab that, 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 and that, and that, and that window, and that window, and that window. There we go. So we've got it all selected. So now if I do a, um, uh, curves and I can I can continue doing it but what it's going to do is just affect the sky now so um, come here give me a cursor my machine's starting to slow down right so that, that's probably too much but just just a little bit more out there and you know it's, it's all down to your own taste really but what's quite nice now is that sky detail on the, on the right is is coming out a little bit more okay uh, get rid of the marching ants 
just click on that. Now, um, the other thing I really wanted for this photo was I got up at four o'clock in the morning and was expecting a nice sunrise and all the clouds to be nice and colourful, which as you can see, it ranges from white to grey pretty much. So um, what I want to do is uh, add some colour into the sky. We're going to use a gradient. But before I do that, where's the uh, yeah, curves with the if I hold if I hold the alt key down and click, uh, that's that's the curves without any uh, mask on it. Well, you can see the masking on on here. Um, but what I could do, uh, just take a paintbrush. Um, probably not enough difference in here, but what I can do is just give this grass a little bit of um, life as if the sun's coming in. And if, if I just, where, where I've done the curves, it's made the grass a bit darker. And what I, can, what I can do is just highlight different areas just to give it a little bit more um, texture. So that's just a very light brushing over there just to remove a little bit of the contrast. So let's look at a gradient. So back onto the original image, you've got a, um, what you need to do is add a new fill layer. So that just puts a fill layer over the top. I'll move that to the top. It's just white. It automatically puts you into um, uh, gradient and you just draw a gradient coming down. Well, that doesn't look much at the moment but what you can do is um, we can go into this control here Th these are all your controls so basically if I click on here it shows you the corresponding node you see it flipping to the top so color I'll go for black just straight black and for the other end I actually want to leave it white but I'll go opaque completely opaque and what I need to do to make that look proper is do a blend and blend that with the background with overlay and this is what you normally you know if you just wanted to um, have like a filter effect as if you'd put on a graduated filter this is the way you can do it so you can just draw that down and then you can adjust the opacity if you want to uh, to, to match your taste but I, I want to do something slightly different I've got the Sun coming in from over here so I'm, I'm gonna move it that way around and you can see there it's had an effect on on the on the on the uh, color but what I can do is instead of making that uh, that color black I can try and make it more of a uh, sunset color or sunrise color now that, that's probably a bit strong but now we can now where's it gone Oh, on the wrong button, that's it. Yeah, no, I've... Uh... So what I can do is, is is just adjust this and I can, where's the center point? There it is. I can move that backwards and forwards and how much of the sky or what I want to change and just generally get the effect I want. It's a bit over the top to say the least. So, I can drop the opacity just just to put a hint of color into the into the sky. Now the alternative, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually delete that and show you another thing. If I go back to this mask here, which had the sky cut out, if I hit Control click, it reloads that that um, um, marching ants. So what I can do is just um, go onto layers, new fill layer, and 
scroll down and drop that across and that end I want to be white and opacity I think For now I'm not affecting the grass the building already has orange on it so I didn't really want orange on orange that would have been a bit much so now I can I can just adjust that I can get rid of the marching ants now I don't actually need them oops oh god there we go I can bring that in from any any direction and just just change how it's uh well, let's change the blend mode back to overlay and it's giving it that that coloration now what i could do now is i think it looks a bit odd that the blue is the blue should be blue because it shouldn't be reflecting anything so again just pick pick my brush pick black overlay hardness low and my meeting's gonna end in 10 minutes excellent so i'm nearly finished i'm just going to take that take that out and leave that blue and you could just adjust it accordingly uh you might that's better that's what we've got um that's probably enough for today so we, we've shown a couple of ways of, of um, developing the photo um, this is a single shot uh, I'll actually take that um, so although I've developed it and it's a single shot there's no reason why you can't go into tone mapping and just do tone mapping on a single shot it works it works quite effectively in fact you know I don't think there was much between the two methods in this particular case I, th I think if I'd um, done better bracketing I could have got, got more out of the HDR um, but I didn't <laughs> Come on, hurry up oh, geez, lying down. show you that you can still work in tone mapping and it can can give quite a nice bit of life to a what could be a dull there you go so it's almost almost the same as the hdr and you, you can do the same thing so you know exactly exactly the same uh, shadows uh, drop the highlights get a bit more out of that um and then just hit apply and take it back So oh, um, here's a couple. I, uh, that's pretty much. Yeah, that's the one I did did the other day, and it's pretty much the same as what I've got on the screen. So I won't bother loading it. But if we go back, there we go. So you might see that in a PDI next next year. Um, any questions? Oh, excellent okay I'll um I think I'll call that a day uh, hopefully it's been of, of use uh, if you have thank you Simon. That's yeah. been very very, uh, very interesting yeah well, hopefully yeah it's it's yeah. the it's just uh, you know taking it through I think I think helps mm. people see what you can do obviously it's only one photo but I might pick different subjects and try and yeah, yeah where where i've used different techniques um quite a lot of time I, I i don't actually bother with the selection i i i just do the do the effect and then i just paint out um where i don't want it i tend to find on buildings it doesn't really matter much if the edges are still a bit darker because that's almost natural so it's it's i might show that technique uh, another week Okay, I'll say goodbye before our meeting is forcibly closed <laughs> by, uh, and I'll uh, actually stop sharing and um, save this recording. Thanks, Thanks a lot for coming. Thanks, Thanks Cheers. Thank you very much.